Damn, look at that old rice. That used to be my rice a long, long time ago. <laughs> Around uh, 2019, <laughs> really wasn't that long ago. <clears throat> anyway, welcome to my video. My name is Tanner Babcock. Um, today I'm going to be comparing some of my favorite terminal emulators. Because I've been shopping around for new terminals a little bit. Um, you know, I've used this build of ST for a few years now, and it's uh, what I rely on whenever I'm in an X session. I've, uh, I've started using the terminal foot for my terminal in a Wayland session. So, just to get this out of the way, here is my GitHub. If there is anyone out there at all that wants to sponsor me, pay me a few bucks every month, uh, I could really make some great work. I could really use that money. That would be really amazing because I need money. So, please give me some money. Here is my plea. You can either give me a $4 a month, $20 a month, or $100 a month. Now anyway, let's get to it. Here is my build of ST on GitLab. I have a I have a little group of repositories for all of my suckless programs here on GitLab. And ST is in this group. So, what does ST actually look like? Well, this is ST right here. It doesn't look like much. Um, I could go to my repository, look at these commits. Here are some of the patches I've applied. Or I've updated ST there. Or <clears throat> has quite a few commits going back to 2019 or so. Yeah. And among these patches are alpha, the box drawing, the new term patch which which lets me fork the terminal with the same working directory, the background gradient the scroll back buffer with the mouse, the new selection colors, and also X resources support. So you don't have to recompile it every time you want to change the colors, it just loads from X resources. But here's the config.h for st. This is where you really configure ST. Here's the font that I'm using. Here's the terminal padding. These options are kind of weird. This, these options just make uh, my font look nicer because this font, space mono, it has a little bit of extra space and all of the letters and characters and stuff, so I try to just move the characters a little bit closer together so it just looks better. can set the cursor, the bell volume, the virtual bell time. You can set the, <clears throat> the term environment variable. Here's the alpha channel. Here's the grad alpha and stat alpha for the gradients. Here's all the colors. These are the typical 16 colors you would get in any terminal. With a vanilla ST you would have to actually write all of these colors in here. Here's the first eight colors 0 through 8 and then here's the next eight colors 9 or 8 or 9 to 15 or 16. 
It's the default foreground, default background color. We can define the cursor shape here. Here's the X resources. This block of code loads all of these options from X resources and it actually applies them to ST. You can use the command uh, XRDB merge X resources to uh, get those changes to take effect. Here's my X resources file. I have some stuff for a uh, URXVT here. Have this thing for DWM, which I do not need. <laughs> so I'll get rid of that. Here's some D menu options for my uh, for this. These colors come from X resources, so I like to use D menu like that with the X resources patch as well. Now, my build of ST loads all of these colors from X resources. I think it might be the only terminal besides URXVT that, that you even uh, configure with X resources. And you don't even do it that way in the vanilla ST. Here's all of my polybar colors, because that uses X resources too. Anyway, this is ST. It's pretty basic. Uh, just a really basic terminal. It's very, very small and fast. It shows icons easily. Here's all the icons. I'm scrolling right now with that patch, the scroll back patch. Like I'm holding shift right now and uh, scrolling with my mouse wheel. So, it's showing these icons nicely now. I have some nice terminal padding. ST is really the winner here, at least on Xorg, because it just it gets the job done. It's so small and tiny, there's not a lot of extra stuff. I think I like this suckless application more than I like DWM and D-menu even. But uh, yeah, that's pretty nice. Good old ST. What about uh, what about another terminal? What about Alacrity? Alacrity is a new terminal it's a fast cross-platform GPU accelerated terminal. Um, a lot of people like it. I like it a lot, even though I can't figure out how to make the background transparent. <laughs> it seems like a pretty decent terminal. I'll go ahead and open one of these. Alacrity. I'll make this font a little bigger, but yeah, here's Alacrity. Alacrity can show icons nicely. Um, what does the Neo Fetch look like? There's the colors. That looks pretty good. Um, what does Vim look like? Vim's okay. It is not sending my mouse clicks to Vim, so uh, that can be a problem. I like to use the mouse in Vim quite a bit. Um, the scrolling works, the mouse scrolling works in Vim, but actually clicking does not work. So that can be a bit of an issue. Um, I like to visually select things with my mouse when I use Vim. You know, I like to copy paste stuff. But you know, that's all right. You know, foot doesn't send the mouse clicks to Vim either. And I just figure, you know, I could use a little more practice with the, the Vim key bindings here. 
maybe not rely on the mouse so much. There's the term, it just says alacrity. This terminal emulator is written in Rust, one of my favorite programming languages. If we look at the source code, how much is there to alacrity? Yeah, Rust is fast. People like to say Rust is slow, but uh, it's not. <laughs> it's very, very fast. People want people like to think that it's slow because uh, when you compile a Rust program, the binary, the resulting executable, is just so big, and you know people think that means it's slow. It's not slow. It's big because it's safe. There are a lot of uh, safety measures that the language crams into this binary. You could also strip that binary and make it smaller. When you compile a Rust project, the default option for building is uh, development. <clears throat> and the develop development binaries always turn out bigger than uh, the release binaries because of all the debug symbols and stuff like that. But you know, if someone were to compile something with like cargo build, you know, release, you know, then that binary would be a lot nicer. So anyway, that's alacrity. Um, let's look at another one. Let's look at Kitty. Here's Kitty. I'm making the the font bigger with a <clears throat> Control Shift plus, or just Control plus, or Control Shift equals. Kitty is really, really nice. I really like Kitty. Even though it doesn't show these icons very well, I mean, it still shows the icons. It has this nice blinking cursor for, uh, instead of the block, like ST has, has this nice blinking cursor. Um, let's see what Vim looks like. If we Vim X in it RC, can we scroll? We can scroll in Kitty, and we can click. Kitty can handle these mouse clicks in Vim. So that's really nice. I can click and drag, which will put me in the visual mode. So that's a really nice thing about Kitty. I also really like Kitty's visual bell, which you can trigger just by pressing left or H on the keyboard right now. There's the visual bell. It's like a nice little flash there. The visual bell for ST is not the same and it's a patch, I think. I'm pretty sure it's a patch. I had to implement, but like... ST just does that. <clears throat> For the visual bell. It's just like a quick flash like that. So it's one thing I really like about Kitty. What's another file we could look at? Let's look at a bit longer of a file. I think these fonts look okay. Um, Make the font smaller. See how the bold font looks. I think it handles the bold fonts, italic fonts, nicely. Um, wow. Yeah, the font names look like that. So I'll show you the configuration file for Kitty. It's called kitty.comp. 
So you can see there's quite a few options here. The colors for the kitty terminal are supplied in this file dot config slash kitty slash kitty dot conf has a, quite a few options here it also had an option like something like graphical backend that's not what it's called but it was like that just Wayland if I wanted kitty to work on a Wayland session it works really well. I think it works a little better than ST does on the Wayland session. Disable the ligatures there. Kitty has support for font ligatures. I just disabled them because I thought they look kind of weird. Here's some options for uh, mouse clicks and scrolling. Has a transparent background. can set the window padding, terminal padding, and it has a nice documentation. You just do a man kitty.conf, and it has all of the options for your kitty.conf. Um, it's not perfect. It's probably not even my first choice for uh, a terminal on X or on Wayland. can use Ranger. I'll see if these uh, image previews in Ranger work with Kitty. And no. Oh, wait. Yes. Yes. Kitty is loading the images from Ranger. So that's nice. What about Alacrity? Can Alacrity do images? Let's find out. Alacrity. We'll zoom in here. Let's see if Alacrity can do images. A lot of these icons you are seeing in Ranger, I uh, put them into Ranger myself so that everything looks nice. <clears throat> the icons are the same in all of the programs that use icons. And yep, there's the pictures. Alacrity supports image viewing in Ranger. I'm not sure what the mode of the image preview is. It might be W3M. It might be Uberzug. I forgot, <laughs> but that's a good thing about Alacrity. It can handle these images. Here's a, the Alacrity config file. Go to config slash Alacrity slash Alacrity dot YML. Alacrity is written in Rust, and these Rust guys like to do things with uh, Tomal or YAML markup languages. It looks pretty simple, you know. Kitty's config is pretty simple. ST config is not simple and kind of scary for new users. So I think Alacrity would be a pretty good choice for uh, new Linux users. It does not use X resources either. All of these colors have to be defined right here. Once again, it is not registering these mouse clicks in Vim. It does recognize the scroll, the mouse scroll, though. I'm not sure if there's more options for Alacrity. I really haven't looked into it that extensively. Like, I'm sure it's possible to have a transparent background you know, stuff like that. What about the bell? Is there a visual bell? No. No visual bell. Alacrity is still really good. I mean, look at those icons. Those icons look nice. Um, looks like how the icons look in ST. 
So what's another terminal we could look at? Well, let's look at this really, really old terminal. RxVT Unicode. Wait, it's not what it's called. URxVT. It's this old ass terminal. RxVT Unicode. We can do an ls. It uh, it does show icons because, like, if we look at my X resources. I am loading the mono version of this space mono nerd font so that old terminals like URXVT can, uh, can show icons. Like here's an icon. URXVT is configured in X resources uh, like X term is. It's kind of strange. Really, only this one and ST are the only two terminals I'm looking at today that are actually configured with X resources. And ST doesn't even do that, you know, by default. But here's some options. Here's some basic options. This right here with the 60 in the brackets, that's the alpha. That's the background opacity. So like if I wanted to change this, make this a 10 instead of a 60, and then I did a XRDB merge X resources, and then I did that, close out of there, pop this open again, and it's like virtually transparent. It's basically see-through, like here. There's the floating window. <laughs> URXVT can have uh, some issues, just some issues because it's so old and, you know, it was written way back in the 80s, 90s, maybe. It was made uh, for computers when the computer display was so much smaller than it is now, kind of like Xterm. But as you can see, it's this very primitive terminal. Um, let's open Ranger. Ah, whoa, yeah. <laughs> Looks like I can't do Ranger <laughs> from within URXVT right now. So uh, that doesn't really make it look good. But you know, is it gonna load? Nope. No Ranger, URXVT, that's all right. I used to use URXVT when I first got into Linux around uh, 2011, 2012. That's really the only terminal emulator I knew <laughs> was URXVT. So I just installed that. I configured it with, you know, X resources and that's what I used on a on Arch Arch Linux Ubuntu. It would have been around then. Well, anyway, I want to see if Foot will start. Probably not because this is an X session. Yeah, we can't look at Foot right now while I'm making this video because it only works on a Wayland. But that is my preferred terminal when I run a Wayland session is foot. Now foot, I believe, is one of the only terminals. Here, let's see. Let's look at foot. Foot terminal. Yeah, foot is one of the only terminals that has a server mode or daemon mode. So you can start foot in the background as you're starting your Wayland session. Just put foot dash dash server at the beginning of a, like here's my river config file. I put this foot dash dash server at the start of my river configuration file. Here's all the, input rules. 
and I have it set so mod for in return spawns the command foot client and not the command foot because if you start foot in server mode you will have to run the command foot client and that will cause the foot server to fork itself but anyway yep good old ST I will probably stick with ST for however long it is that I will have to stick with XORG <laughs> As long as I have to keep using XORG, I will probably keep using ST. To compile ST, it's real easy. Just type a make. Maybe install a development package or two if you need to, but yep, that's ST. I type dot slash ST, and there it is. There's a newly compiled fresh ST from my GitLab. If you want to have a look at uh, my personal build of ST, the URL is down here. It's going to be a gitlab.com slash tbsuckless slash ST. And uh, I will have a link to that in the description of this video. And we can just go back to my uh, GitLab profile now. Can look at Foot some more. Yeah, Foot's really nice. It's available on all of these distros. And it has a lot of features. It is very feature rich. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching my video. I'm just going to leave this on my uh, GitHub sponsors page. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, or you could check me out on Odyssey. And be sure to take a look at my website, too. I'm going to have a link to my website in the description. Well, anyway, guys, thanks for watching.